Hey YouTube, I'm gonna try and solve all my tech problems, one video at a time, starting with this. It's the Motorola 5G. I've been itching for a new phone. I don't know why, my current phone is great. It causes no problems, does everything I need, but something is missing. I didn't realize that, until I saw the Motorola 5G. You felt it too. Want to beam up? Or maybe that's just my own thing. So what do I love about this phone? Let's start with the looks. There's no denying, this is a beautiful looking phone. It's made of glass and metal. It feels hefty. It feels really smooth. The outer screen, is a 2.7 inch display and it's really really handy it's great for checking your notifications it's great for responding to your notifications it also has some other very useful features namely being able to take selfies with the main camera that main camera comes at 48 megapixels with an aperture of f 1.7 so Lots of light going onto that sensor. It has laser autofocus and optical image stabilization. Given all of that, why would you ever even need to open this phone to use that selfie camera? Apart from perhaps video chats. What's a real shame is that there's no ultra wide lens here. And that would have been really great for group selfies. This would have been a perfect phone for that actually. Outdoors with decent light, images are excellent quality. The HDR does a good job of balancing the darker areas and brighter areas. The low light image quality from the main camera is adequate, but the actual selfie camera left a lot to be desired. Images seem to come out quite soft. You can actually open that camera app with a... with a twist. When you do open that phone, you're greeted by this lovely screen. It's a plastic AMOLED at 6.2 inches and as you can see, it's a taller, thinner screen because the aspect ratio is 21 by 9. I think that makes it a bit more comfortable to hold. Yes, the screen is very bright, easy to see in daylight. Yes, it's colourful and yes, you do feel those grooves as you're using the phone. I said grooves because there are three of them. There, there, and down there. Motorola went a slightly different way with their uh, folding screen tech, and that actually enables it to fold completely flat, unlike the Samsung Z Flip. The disadvantage is that I think what you notice is a lumpier screen overall as you move your finger up and down it. So on balance, I'm not sure which is better. What do you think? Would you prefer one deeper groove or a slightly lumpier surface? In terms of day-to-day -day use, I found the user interface to be very fluid and slick. I didn't experience any lag. And you're running Android 10 here on eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of storage which should last you a fair while but there is no expandable storage. The Snapdragon 765 processor seems to be able to handle all of my everyday tasks which include web browsing, shopping, YouTube, uh, social media so admittedly not very demanding tasks but it probably should be fine for gaming as well. Having said that, would you really want to game on this device? One of the things that did concern me was battery life. Now, battery capacity on this phone is only 2800 milliamp hours, which sounds small, but Motorola seemed to have optimized this uh, phone quite well. So with my typical usage of about four hours per day, I found I was easily making it to the end of the day. So battery life was a pleasant surprise. One feature that was missing 
and deeply missed was wireless charging. And in this day and age, I'm not sure you can call a phone a flagship if it doesn't have wireless charging. Is that something you agree with? Let me know in the comments below. But for me, wireless charging is really an essential feature and I can't understand why Motorola wouldn't have put that on a device like this. I, th I think this would have been perfect for wireless charging. What you do get is some of the Motorola shortcuts. The one that I tried to demonstrate earlier was the uh, camera opening, which is the twist. Then you also have things like the uh, chop chop to turn on the flashlight. Not quite sure how to turn it off. In the box, you get the USB-C charger, a USB-C to USB-A cable, and a pair of USB-C earphones. So, to summarize, would I recommend this phone? It's a great phone. I think that it is up there with flagship phones. It costs more than your typical flagship, so you really want to be willing to pay for that folding screen. But for me, the deal breaker really is the lack of wireless charging. I, I just cannot accept any phone that doesn't have wireless charging anymore. It's the fatal flaw of this phone and I wouldn't get it. But as I said in the title, I do believe that this is actually the best iteration of a folding phone. I'm really not convinced that there's any other useful benefit to having folding screens other than to make things a bit more portable and smaller. But let me know if you agree or disagree with that in the comments below. I love solving tech problems, whether that's tinkering, building stuff, hacking stuff that already exists to make it better. And if that's what you're interested in, then please subscribe and let me tell you some stories about what I get up to. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.